What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode. Today, we are going to be talking about something that is going to help you as an angler. Now, it is almost 4th of July weekend. We are getting ready to head up north and do some fishing. And most likely, we're going to be targeting walleyes pretty heavily on the lake that we're going to. So what I want to do today is give you guys three baits, three techniques that I think most walleye anglers do not use. But after years of bass fishing, smallmouth, walleye, everything, I believe that these techniques are super deadly and they're mostly unused and they're gonna catch you a whole bunch more walleyes. So make sure that you stay tuned, watch this whole video and catch some more fish on your next summer trip. Well, I had to go change into my PC Fun quick dry sun shirt. Uh, took the hoodie off, it got a little bit warm outside. It was chilly here this morning, it was like 59 degrees but we got our sun shirt on we are nice and cool now and we are ready to rock so as i said in the intro of this video guys i want to help you catch more summertime walleyes over my career in fishing what i have realized and what i have found out from many many great anglers is that sometimes the best thing to do is just think outside the box sometimes thinking outside the box is going to give you an advantage over other anglers and most importantly an advantage over the fish no doubt that over the course of time certain presentations certain lures um, become stagnant become seen over and over again and if you're fishing pressured bodies of water this can certainly impact the amount of fish that you're going to catch so i'm going to go over these three tactics that i think that you need to try to catch more walleyes this summer so let's go ahead and let's jump in to number one okay number one if you are any sort of a finesse fisherman, or if you like targeting smallmouth bass and walleyes, there's a good chance that you've heard of a drop shot setup. Now a drop shot is a setup that consists of a hook about 18 inches or so above a weight. And that's gonna sit on bottom and allow that bait to just stick out and kind of hang right in the fish's face. Now, what you're gonna do, or what I like to do with a drop shot, is first of all, I start with a nice long leader. I usually do a leader that's about seven or eight feet. The reason I do that is usually you're using light line. You're fishing around rocks, typically for smallmouth and walleye specifically, and you're gonna break off. You're gonna end up breaking off and you don't wanna have to retie leaders. So start with a nice long leader. I like to use eight pound test. Sometimes in very clear water situations, I will go down to six pound test. Generally, the weight that I'm going to use around rock is either going to be a round weight like this one, or one that's shaped like a bell or a teardrop weight. And those, the reason I use those is because they stay out of the rocks. The other style is cylindrical, it's long and narrow. That's better for drop shotting walleyes around weed edges, because that will come through the weeds better. But most of the time, if I'm drop shotting walleyes, I'm usually using live scope around some sort of a structure, and I'm gonna be pitching this drop shot setup in that area. So you don't wanna break off too many of these weights because the tungsten does get expensive. As far as my setup, I am using a seven foot two, PC Fun Serpent Series spinning rod and just a 10 pound braid main line. And this is a Carbon X 2000. So what I really like to use most of the time is a large or a jumbo leech. It just catches them like crazy. You can imagine with that drop shot sitting above bottom and that leech just swimming, it is very, very tantalizing for those fish. So live bait obviously is always good, but Live bait can become expensive, especially if you're in an area where you have a lot of uh, fish that are pecking at that leech, whether it's bluegills or smaller walleyes or even little smallmouth. So that leech can get destroyed quickly and your trip can become pretty expensive pretty fast. What I like to do is find a good drop shot bait, what I would call a drop shot bait. And it's usually a four inch finesse worm and something that will imitate a leech very well. Um, the pack that I have here is from Get Bit Baits and that is Dan Elsner out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. And what I like to do is just take, you can see that worm there, give you guys a good look at that. It's just a four inch black worm. I like to use black or like a dark gray, but black always seems to work well. And the nice thing about these get bit baits is that they float. So this floating worm really imitates a leech really well, nice and thin and narrow. And so basically what I'll do is I'll just take the nose of that leech, I'll go in about a quarter of an inch, and I'll just run that hook through there like that. Now under the water, you can't tell now, but this will become buoyant and it will stick out like this and it'll just dance just like a live leech will. So you're gonna cast that out. If you're on live scope, you can target them actively by scanning and casting to a fish and you will be amazed how far a fish will travel through the water column to chase a drop shot. Obviously this drop shot sits on the bottom, but uh, just recently on a trip, I had several suspended walleyes that were up about 10 feet off bottom and they shot straight down 
to chase that drop shot down to the bottom. So if you don't get the immediate pickup, so with live scope, you cast, they go down, they pick it up right away. If you're just fan casting or you don't have live scope, you wanna make as much bottom contact with that weight as possible. You don't ever want that weight to leave the bottom. So you wanna keep a nice taut line and you're just gonna really, really gently shake your hand, okay? That rod tip should only be moving maybe two to three inches at the tip. And you want it to be very subtle, very finesse. I see people drop shotting and going like crazy. There's nothing in the water column that moves that erratically besides a darting bait fish. Um, try to imagine mimicking a leech. So if you have to, throw this thing in some shallow clear water and figure out what that rhythm is because the rhythm can be the difference in getting bites or not getting any bites at all. So guys, if you haven't tried a drop shot for chasing walleyes, I would definitely suggest giving it a chance this summer. Okay guys, so I am going to save the best for last. And when I say the best, I'm not necessarily saying the best at catching the most or the biggest walleyes, but I am saying the best bait in the sense that I don't think enough walleye anglers are using it. So I'm gonna save that one for last. So make sure you stick around for that third bait. But that being said, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump into number two right now. Again, if you're into finesse fishing or smallmouth fishing, you have probably heard of the Ned Rig. A Ned Head is just simply a mushroom shaped jig head. And I'll kind of show you that right here. So just a little mushroom shaped jig head. Most often when you're using a Ned Rig, you are going to be using a jig head that is really light. So you might use a 1 32nd, a 1 8th, um, a 1 16th. It really just depends on how deep you're fishing it and uh, how quick of a fall rate you're looking for. Now the cool thing about these little Ned Heads, this one specifically is from Swagger Tungsten. So the cool thing about these specifically is if you're in those situations where you don't really know if fish are on the bottom or if they're gonna be up in the weeds, what you can do is you can throw a little swim bait on here. I like to use a little Kitek three inch swim bait. This is just a natural color. What you'll do is you'll go ahead and you'll thread that little swim bait up on there and you'll get that to sit right there on that bait. And the cool thing about that Ned head is you can actually let it sink all the way to the bottom and the shape of a Ned head allows it to stand on the bottom just like this with that buoyancy of that lure. So it really imitates a bait fish kind of feeding along the bottom and you'll just drag it and kind of pop it through the rocks, keep it tight to the bottom. But if you find that situation where you have those fish that are feeding up high, that are suspended, if they're chasing young of the year perch or whatever it might be, you can also cast this net rig out and you can use it as a swim bait. It swims absolutely beautifully with a little tail on the back like that. I was out this year earlier up in Northern Wisconsin and I just whacked the walleyes and this is exactly what I was using. I was throwing a Ned rig with a little swim bait on it, ultra finesse technique, casting, counting it down and just slowly rolling it back to the boat. And I will be honest, I have not had many walleyes hit as hard as those fish were hitting that swim bait. Again, in that situation, I like to use the 7-2 Serpent from PC Fun, and I also have a 2000 on this one as well. This one's a Viper X, and also the Serpent Series 7-2. So main line, same thing, 10 pound braid. So you'll notice a lot of my finesse setups are gonna be very similar. It's that 7-2 or 6-8, and it's almost always a 2000, maybe a 1000 sometimes, but it just kind of depends on the scenario. Okay, are you guys ready? I am willing to bet that most walleye anglers have probably not used this bait for walleyes. I'm saying that based on the fact that I know quite a few different walleye pros. I have a lot of buddies that fish for walleyes and I've never ever heard them mention this bait to me. So either one, we're not as good of friends as I think we are and they're holding out on me or two, they might just not have figured out that this is a good walleye bait yet. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump into that one right now. Okay, last but certainly not least on this top three walleye baits you didn't know is the spy bait. So again, a lot of these are coming from the bass world guys because normally I'm a bass guy, but I have transitioned into a lot of walleye fishing in the last few years. And so that bait right there, this one you can see is a very natural perch color, which here in the Midwest, young of the year perch or a young fingerling perch like this, they dominate a lot of bodies of water as a popular forage. Uh, a lot of lakes don't have shad or too much of a natural shiner population or anything like that. And those young of the year perch become a very, very primary food source for walleyes. Uh, one of the things that I do with any fish that I keep, I'm, I always open their stomachs up and take a look at what their natural forage is. And I have found so many young perch inside of walleyes. Now a spy bait is a little bit unique. It's a little bit of a different style setup in terms of how you're going to throw it. Now my rod is still the same. 
my line is still the same. I still have that same 7.2 with the 10 pound braid main line. I will go down to a six or a seven pound fluorocarbon leader just because this is a very, very subtle finesse technique. The spy bait really, really shines on flat, calm days. So as a walleye fisherman, you're always looking for that walleye chop, right? You want a little bit of ripple on the water, kind of break up that sunlight that's penetrating. Well, this guy will shine on those days where you think, ah, it's just too calm to fish walleyes. You go out there and what you're gonna do is you're going to cast this bait out and you're gonna count it down. And for walleyes, what I like to do is I run it about two feet above the bottom two feet above the bottom. And what this bait will do is it will just kind of go along and shimmy like this. And you can even see, I can see in the camera right now, there's just a little bit of flash from the little bit of sun we have right now. And that little bit of flash, that little subtle flash is perfect. It looks just like a natural bait in the water. Now, what happens with these two propellers here is they create what is called a plume effect. They leave a little turbulence trail right behind the bait. Now you will feel it, especially if you're using braid when you're running this bait along the bottom, you will feel almost like turbulence goes away. Well, that is because what happens is you have that turbulence and a fish comes up and it breaks the turbulence and you can feel that through your braid. So you almost know you're gonna get a bite before you get a bite. Um, every now and then they'll mess with you and they'll trail the bait and they won't actually eat it. But most of the time when you feel that plume effect break and that turbulence is gone, it's because there's a fish trailing it and they're gonna eat it. So if you feel that, it's time to get ready. Um, something I do wanna point out very, very specifically with this bait is it takes a massive amount of concentration um, to fish this without live scope, okay? With live scope, it's much easier because you are watching exactly where that bait is at all times and you can keep it right along the bottom. Without live scope, you really, really have to count down and focus on how slow you need to reel because I guarantee you, you'll have to reel slower than you think. That is where a brand new reel from PC Fun comes into the picture. So what I have in my hands, and I will do a video in more detail with this reel, but I figured it was a good time to show it to you since I was going to be using it with this technique. This is the PC Fun Auric. So the PC Fun Auric that I have here is a little bit unique in the PC Fun lineup because this reel is actually a 5.2 to one gear ratio. Now what you'll see in almost all of our 2000 plus size reels is that they're at least 6.2 to one. A lot of people want that speed, that line uptake, being able to you know, catch up with those big fish as they run at the boat. But there are times where that lower gear ratio is going to help. The first place is when you need torque, when you need a lot of power. That's for those bigger, bigger fish. The second place is when you really want to slow roll a bait. And when I'm talking slow rolling, the spy bait is the king. So the other thing that it can work very well for is I showed you that Ned rig with that swim bait. Same exact thing. The Auric can work very well for slow rolling that in deeper water. So a lower gear ratio is gonna allow you to more easily slow down your reeling versus that 6.2 to one, which is a pretty quick reel. So definitely if you don't have live scope, pay attention to that. Reel very, very slowly. If you don't have live scope, reel enough for your bait to just tick the bottom every now and then. And then you know to speed up just a little bit to keep it in the strike zone. But if you take this bait and you end up too high above the bottom, those walleyes probably won't be willing to come off the bottom and commit and you're gonna end up catching a lot of smallmouth bass most likely. So next time you guys go out, definitely go out there, pick up a spy bait. I personally really, really like Duo Realis. They have some great natural colors for clear bodies of water and they also have a ton of other colors as well. So Duo Realis, and they call it Dual Realis Spin Bait. This one actually here in my hand is the Spin Bait 80. It's a little bit smaller. And I found that walleyes generally like that a little bit better. Well guys, I hope that video was helpful for you. I hope you were able to learn a little bit more about a few techniques for walleyes that will help you put some more fish in the boat this summer. A lot of times guys, all you have to do is try something a little different. Now for me, the reason I was able to figure this out is because I'm generally a smallmouth fisherman and I really target those fish consistently wherever I go. And I started to notice what would happen is all of a sudden I would get a walleye here and a walleye there. And then I really started to realize it was more of a pattern. These fish actually really liked these baits that I was throwing. So then I would go out on walleye trips on purpose and I would use these baits specifically to target those fish. And by doing that, I learned and realized that in fact, these bass baits were very, very good walleye baits. So even though they're bass techniques, what they really are is they're great fish catching techniques. So don't hesitate, tie some of these rigs up before your next walleye trip, go out, give them a shot. If you have any questions at all about any of the techniques in this video, feel free to drop me a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer those for you. If you guys have not yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button. 
We appreciate it and we want you to be subscribed. That way, every time we drop a video, you can come by and see it. And we are gonna be doing a giveaway next month, a big giveaway. So make sure that you guys stick around. And like I said, hit that subscribe button so you can be entered into that giveaway when it drops. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you. It is time for me to get cleaned up and prepped because we are headed to the lake this weekend. So I gotta get my boat ready, get rigged up, get everything all good to go and all charged. So thank you guys again. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.